watching this sick shit. This is sickening. That is Astro Artist. Woo! PewDiePie, did you hear about the new movie they're making? That is Astro Artist. No, no, I never heard of it. Please tell me more. Someone needs to tell you that they are making a movie about Tommy Wiseau and the room. It's called The Disaster Artist. Oh, wow, that's incredible. How did I not know this? You need to see the trailer for that. That is it, about Tommy Wiseau, but if you've ever seen it, then ignore it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Stop making fucking stupid videos and do a review on the disaster. Shut the fuck up! Okay, fine. I'll make a review. That's right, I'm a movie critic now. The Disaster Artist is a movie I never thought would exist. Similar to the other movie review I made, Blah, a movie I never thought would exist either. This is my niche, I have finally found it. I review movies that I never thought would exist. Ah, <laughs> The Disaster Artist is a movie about a movie, about a book, about a movie, about a book, about... <laughs> now, if you have seen The Room, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The Disaster Artist is based on the movie The Room. I made a movie about The Room. I really recommend checking it out and I explain why I love The Room so much. It's a movie that is hilariously bad. And unlike a lot of bad movies, I've talked about bad movies before on my channel. This is like when Luke Skywalker could, took off the mask of Darth Vader. Why did he need that anyway, by the way? Okay, great. What is that thing? The Room is a kind of bad movie I can rewatch infinite amount of times. I never get sick of it. I love showing it to people. I love sharing information about the movie because the more you know about The Room, the more intrigued you get by it. So when the book came out from one of the guys that was in the room explaining how the, the room was made, called The Disaster Artist by Greg Cicero, reading that, I just got a newfound love for the film. It's actually a very, very interesting story about unlikely friendship and uh, two people finding success in, in failure. It's a very touching story, and which you wouldn't expect. Tommy and Greg are actually very close friends uh, Which when you watch the room you would never have guessed. I mean they're they're complete opposite You have Tommy which is really old uh, Sorry, Tommy if you're listening <laughs> He's clearly not American, but he wants to be uh, But he's also very rich for reasons we never find out and then you have Greg which is young, American, and doesn't have any money. But what draws these two characters together, or people together, because this is a true story, is them wanting to make it in Hollywood, wanting to become actors. And the movie shows that. It's, it starts off with Greg seeing Tommy at a drama class, and Greg is just so intrigued by Tommy, how he is so fearless in his acting. He's not very good, but he's so... There's something that draws him in about him. They become friends, and... Despite their differences, they decide to move to LA together and uh, try and make it in Hollywood. And the book in the movie pretty much pans out the same way here. I read the book about two years ago, so my memory is a little fuzzy on the whole thing. Tommy doesn't find any success in LA. He's, he's not a good actor. Greg found some success, uh, but nothing really too overwhelming. And I think they are, they are both in the time where they just want to give up on their dream that they had together, but then they, Tommy comes up with the idea, I'm just gonna make my own movie, and you're gonna be in it. And so, The Room was born. And here's where the book and the movie really sets apart, uh, as far as I remember. In the, in the movie, it's very Hollywood, where, oh, we're gonna make a movie, and it's gonna be great, everyone's gonna be super happy, yes, of course I wanna be part of it. When in reality, and described in the book, Greg didn't want, want to be part of the movie at all. He actually just accepted to be part as a line producer of the film, so he wasn't even gonna act in the movie, but he would be a stand-in for the actor for his role uh, as Mark. Basically, he would just stand in the frame of the camera to, so the camera knows where he will be. But Tommy wanted Greg to be in the movie. So the movie is about 
them after all. It's a reflection of their friendship. Like I said, you would never have guessed it, but it, it is the truth. So Tommy basically would just start slowly start replacing uh, in Greg more and more and to the point where he would just take over and start acting in the film. Uh, without even telling the original actor, which is hilarious and horrible at the same time. And there's a lot of bad stuff like that that isn't in the film. There's a lot of a lot of me, a lot of maybe stuff that you don't want to really tell that's left out. How they constantly change crew while making the film, arguing with with actors during the film. Uh, n refusing to pay people during the film. These are the sort of things that was left out of the movie. I understand why they did, because it would have been too long, too convoluted, and too complicated. But I think they did a good job at tying it all together. They tell the story about their friendship, and I think, and the making of the movie, and I think that was the main point. I do think there was some miscasting in the film. It seemed like they were all just friends that wanted to make this movie, in my opinion, which I understand. It's like, oh, you're making a movie about the room. I love the room. You have to put me in it, James. But other than that, it was, I couldn't have asked for more. I thought it was extremely entertaining. I was laughing throughout the whole thing. And there was a lot of inside jokes, uh, which not as many people were laughing at. But at the same time, I realized while watching it, you don't even have to have seen the room to enjoy the disaster artist. And, I think that that's a really a feat of its own. Uh, James Franco renders Tommy Wiseau in such a hilarious, relatable, and endearing way. You can tell that James was really invested in Tommy's character. I watched an interview with Seth Rogen uh, where he explains it, which I thought was really nice. It was incredibly personal to him in a weird way, and he felt this weird kinship with Tommy Wiseau, who's the guy <laughs> in the movie. So we really wanted to just support him. Someone makes a piece of art, hoping it's received one way. Yeah. It is actually received for the exact opposite reasons that you hoped it would, mm -hmm. but the result is actually the same. You become right. famous, people like you. <laughs> you have movie stars making movies about you. You make money. Uh, it you get, money. You're you in get profit. Paid. You're you in the, paid. yeah, you're getting paid. <laughs> and, and Franco, as someone who has done a lot of weird art shit um, throughout his life, constantly being misunderstood, misinterpreted, people thinking that the shit he thought was great was stupid and vice right. versa. Um, <laughs> it was incredibly personal to him in a weird way and he felt this weird kinship with Tommy Wiseau who's the guy in the movie. You can truly tell that uh, James was deeply invested in Tommy's character. Watching the teaser trailer for this film I got kind of annoyed because they had already changed so much they skipped bits that were uh, hilarious. So I was really worried about this film. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Take 67. Action. I hit her. No. Do you want to change the line? You're doing great, man. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. In this scene at the end, Tommy would never look up. He would always just forget what he was doing and forget that he actually needs to look at the person if he sees the one. Oh, hi, Mark. Uh, so apparently what they did was everyone would just wave at Tommy when he was finishing the scene so that he would look up and, say, and then he would just look up and say, oh, hi, Mark. And that's how they finally got the shot. He also hit his head multiple times while get, going out of that little box. So it's almost like the movie skipped out on a lot of hilarious stuff, in my opinion. And I remember uh, reading about this in the book, and it was just so funny to relive that horrible, horrible scene uh, and knowing what went down for it to happen. I think the main difference between the movie and the book is that the book ends before, right before the premiere, the movie starts, but the, the movie ends a bit after with a nice happy ending. I'm not sure if the ending was actually that happy. I, I, I think I think anyone that was involved in the project of the room probably went through a really rough time. I think it affected a lot of people's lives really negatively. Uh, watching interviews from a lot of the actors involved uh, with their careers and their uh, confidence being destroyed uh, for everyone Tommy for Greg for all the the other actors as well and 
the people making the movie not being credited properly and I don't think the ending of the book was a happy ending but I think now that the movie is out and you have people loving the room you have people so dedicated for me. people like me who just find so much joy in it it's been remade by Hollywood superstars into a film and it's a great story it's an amazing story and I really hope so even though they completely changed the ending it makes sense now I think I and I, I think and I really hope that everyone involved in the room with this film coming out the disaster artist find a closure insane story of making the room. I, I think it and I really hope it ends in a positive way for for everyone in, involved And it seems like it, it seems like Tommy has found a lot of joy in uh, all this is attention and, and Greg as well and uh, It's a life-changing thing to be part of and it, it was nice seeing it sort of being wrapped up. Maybe I'm reading into it a bit too much I don't know you can still really very much enjoy the book. It goes way and beyond on details and it's hilarious. It's good details that I, I actually really recommend. Uh, there's also an audiobook version of the the book, which I also really recommend because Greg reads out all the lines and he does Tommy Wiseau's voice so great. And it really shows that he's actually not a not a bad actor. The movie doesn't replace the book and the book doesn't replace the movie. I think you can enjoy them. Uh, both individually. It's not like it spoils anything, is what I'm saying. I'm gonna give the movie an 8.5. It was hilarious. I would love to see it again. Some changes that I kind of disagreed with, but overall, very satisfying. I really enjoyed it. An 8.6 I'm gonna give it. Go watch it! Let me know what you think. And this has been Movie Review with PewDiePie. Leave a like, and Squad Fam out. You know what they say, Hi doggy.